So that's step one, get the cage stop. And then you're away then. coming nicely, but you'll notice he's also keeping an eye on the rope. He has a look at the drum occasionally, because at this point, if it all starts to stack up on one side of the winch drum, you might decide to stop and actually push one pile over with a bar of some sort to get it to feed across the drum nicely. So you've got a nice bit of tension there, even with a relatively lightweight load. So you can imagine if you've got another edge to bog down, um, you're going to get a lot of tension on that rope. The other thing, if you're doing a big winching job, don't forget your axle is now rotating in that back wheel bush. So if you're going to do a lot of trees, fetch your trees out, you need to lubricate that back wheel because suddenly your axle is turning in that wheel whereas normally it wouldn't. So that's another thing you've just got to remember, that if you're going to spend an hour winching, you want some lubrication in there, because it, it will be running down. Mr. Hawkswell has explained eloquently how, in fact, it's almost self-lubricated, but a squirt of oil is always a good thing in that situation. ideal winching speed. You don't need to have it going like hell because she's pulling just as hard at that speed as she would be at three times the speed. That's the power of steam. So just bringing him in nicely under control. Never pull harder than you need to because you're only putting more tension in the road so that your chances of breaking it are greater. 